So I went through a couple iterations from the first video of how boss works. I've deployed out two out of the three servers and uh, changed some things along the way. So initially I had an agent that kind of ran and monitored containers and I changed that to using systemd and kind of a proxy that sits in between containerd and systemd so that systemd can restart, do all that stuff and uh, containerd still uses the does the runtime and life cycle things like that and so I removed the agent I deployed a bunch of crap and then uh, it, it got to be a pain logging into all the servers so I added an agent back but all it is is a gRPC service so that I can manage it from like my desktop or whatever so I'll show you the changes with like init and deploying things out the differences from the first video as I like set up this third server and show you the different things like that so this is like a brand new server that I have there's nothing on it except boss and boss will also set up container D now container D now and uh like handle everything from a fresh install and even install like your SSH keys and stuff like that. So the changes are like <clears throat> every machine has this global config file and it serves not only for uh, configuration of boss but also the initialization of boss. So you kind of give machines an ID you tell it the default interface, what domain. Um, I need all my machines on the same time zone, so I made it uh, ensure that they're they're all in sync. Have agent configs. If you're running a registry locally and you don't need TLS because it's on your network, then you can add this plain remotes. And then in the first video, I I showed the it. You was like boss in it, console boss in it, CNI stuff like that. Now you just have these different sections within the config for setting all those up. So you have console configuration. I don't have to remember all those flags. I have CNI configuration. I don't have to remember that stuff and so on. And CNI, I'm still working through this. So with Mac VLAN, uh, you can't talk from the host to containers that are using Mac VLAN. The routes are screwed up. So I have to create a Mac VLAN interface on the host and give it an IP. I was using this same IP as the host, but when I was updating route tables and stuff, I would lose connectivity for a while. So I just allocate two IPs per machine right now until I can figure out something, uh, a, be a better solution for that. And then I have like the node exporter stuff. I want my servers to have a cool banner when I log in and then my key to get on the servers. So to like set up a server, you just sudo boss in it. And then everything's broken down into steps. So it'll tell you exactly what it's going to do, like set up Varla boss. Set set up systemd with the unit file so that it can act as a proxy uh, changing your time zone setting up the agent console blah 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 things that it's going to register in console since we have console set and the rest of the stuff and also one thing to note is like if you use console and boss together just because this is built for me it changes your DNS settings to forward everything through console and I had to disable systemd resolved because I, I changed the settings I told it to forward through console I set console to 53 on localhost and systemd resolved just wouldn't do it and I had no I, I couldn't figure it out and I spent like hours on it so I just disable so boss will disable and uh, stop resolve D and manage etc resolve conf itself to set up those console name servers so it's just an extra check of saying hey we're gonna manage your DNS is this okay you can say no 
and it'll it'll stop but we'll say yes it adds the DNS install step we say yes again and now it's a prettier output it'll tell you what steps it's on as it goes through kind of how long it takes to set up and so on so it's going to bootstrap our whole system, install all this stuff, build kit, CNI, console, set up DNS, and register everything. And then it's done setting up the system. And uh, if we jump here, the system's IP was 41. So if I go to this, you can see I have a console here set up and it has the agent registered with the boss tag so you know where to where to contact it at it has build kit console everything build kits over tcp now so you can do remote builds anywhere that you have access to ma this machine and so on so also because i was iterating through all these install steps and so on i also have a dash dash init undo and this basically removes boss and gets your machine back to a similar state and i say similar because i i screwed with dns and so i just set etc resolve conf to 8888 right now and i don't want to didn't want to enable systemd resolve d again because i've had so many problems but if we do that go back to the web ui refresh it and it's unable to connect because it tore everything down so I'll uh, go ahead and set this up again it'll install and then we can go over to my desktop and I have this examples file and this redis or this example redis file and now with the agent we can say dash dash the agent i also have an mvar if you want to set on that but you can create these containers for through anywhere so we'll hit enter it should get a container up and then you can do all the boss commands like update upgrade things like that and then list so it's running it's got its public ip and all that stuff and you can do the image upgrades and things from here it's a little different than before you have to um, oops you have to edit your redis and you can change anything in in boss now so uh, i removed the upgrade command where it just took an image now it takes uh, the same config again so if we want to change cpus change the image to 4.0 alpine things like that then you can run uh, pseudo boss update or I mean boss update and this will um, do the update to redis and let's list this again it should be started and if I connect up to this do an info and we should see we're on 4.0 now redis 4.0 where oh there we go redis version so you can you can change anything now in the config and redo it you can even add more services and things like that and if we go into console and refresh this we can see redis automatically gets added with whatever tags and the ip through service discovery all right, so we can look at some of the boss code that handles this stuff. So in the config, this has the the uh, system config in it. So all the fields that uh, you can configure, and when when I want to add a new one or whatever, you can just add this add a struct, and then when the init part runs it calls this steps to like get all the steps for this and this is what makes it really easy to do like init and then undo and roll back so each of these steps is 
a, a struct so that a step is an interface and it just adds all these it adds the step directly from whatever was configured and then there is some messy code of like if console is here then automatically run these register steps and stuff like that so we can look at like the console step here and so I want console running on the host because it's going to be health checking containers and stuff like that I don't want it in a container health checking containers I don't think that's that's a good way to run run things but steps can also have sub steps so it registers container D as well and then just some go templating for getting the console config and setting up a recursor for DNS things like that so like every step has a run part of it and this is in the init and then it also has a re remove for how to remove um, the thing and so run like makes more lib console gets gets the IP renders that template and so on sets up system D stuff like that and the cool part coming out in container D 1.2 is this install API so you can use like uh, if we jump back on the server you can see these steps they all have an image for it and they're public images or private whatever you want but you can package even system level things now with existing distribution stuff and use container D's distribution mechanisms to like pull down those images and then container D has a install so um, it has a manage opt directory so opt container D bin where it puts these system level binaries and it will extract it out of these images that you pull so you can easily bootstrap systems like this so the code for getting like console and build kit on my system with boss is basically these two lines which is a standard like image pool from containerd and uh, containerd's client here just has an install method and say install this image uh, you can have different ops of install libs with it so some of them may be dynamically compiled and you need to install libs in the op directory and whether to replace what you have or not so it's it's super simple and even like as it installs container d after that gets up and running the container d step will get run c on your system using this um, existing existing method so it installs my run c image here to get run c on the system so i basically don't have the only binary i have to scp over is boss all right so that's basically kind of how init and un undo work and this server i need to change a few things so let's undo this yes yes so I, I already have two servers up and running and I need to make this one join the cluster with console. So af after I remove this, oh yeah, I forgot Redis is still running. Damn it. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back where I was. I just needed to run in and it again and then stop and delete the that Redis container and uh, I showed you my config had that message of the day so like you can see when I log in now it has that so let's go into this uh, my machine config and I had this line here commented out so basically we want to set this one up and have it join the other two and so in console in the console part of the config if you don't have any join steps, it, it starts console with bootstrap so that it thinks it's the only one. But if you add this join step here, I haven't tried this yet, so hopefully it doesn't screw up the rest of my servers running stuff. Okay, sudo boss in it. All right, so we should see another step here that was different from before, and it's a join. 
So before we just had console and then it starts registering things and now that we tell it to join these other servers we'll have that join step and we'll say yes yes and the DNS step is added at the end because it will add all the console servers as DNS name servers on the system instead of just the local one now so this should get us set up and we should be good to go so if hop back in here so we should see the full cluster now if I refresh and yep there so it joined we should have three nodes now they're all up they're all healthy and looks good so the last uh, few things is we can go ahead and and run that container again and this time it will be on the cluster so that should get started and now after a while we should see we have a redis there starts health checking and we're good so everything's joined the rest of the cluster um, a cool part is the way i have console set up if we go to the key value store go to boss there's a new new part called configs in the container config so if I go here there's this configs part and it'll store configuration and automatically pull it down and watch it from within console so if I go to Prometheus here we can look at the config it bas Prometheus ba basically uses uh, console service discovery to dynamically set everything up so if I go to my Grafana and I go to servers now because I installed node exporter we have all three servers now this one should be uptime 24 minutes which was that new one that we just set up and it's automatically collecting uh, resource information and stuff like that and I can go through and and see the rest of the servers so you get automatic service discovery and automatic metrics collection and things like that and uh, basically console or this Prometheus config looks for anything with the metrics tab so whenever you launch a service and it has this metrics tag on it or label it will automatically add it to Prometheus so you basically get auto Prometheus auto service discovery everything like that with boss and the way I have it set up so far so I think that's it that's where a lot of the major changes were um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start working on checkpoint and restore because my uh, my number three server here is kind of my infrastructure I want to move Prometheus to number two that I just set up so I want to do a live migrate over a docker registry and uh, it it's kind of a new feature in container D that just kind of got enabled within the last month or so so I'll have to do some work there about live migrating containers with with all their RW layers, any bind mounts, things like that, and go from one server to another. And hopefully I can retain the same IPs during migration. I still have to figure that part out. But yeah, that's kind of the recent changes I have in, in BOSS. Uh, NC. I also have the registry config. And whenever I make changes here, I can you can save this and the way the system decode works it sets up a watch on any of these configs so, so there's this store.watch let me see where this code is so it'll fetch it'll get the spec of the container that you have get the console kv store and then do a watch on it and anytime you update the config 
um, you can specify what type of signal. So like if you're running an Nginx server and when you update the config, you can just sig up it, sig h up it, uh, just hup it, I guess is what you call it. And then it'll do a load of the config with like no downtime. And so you can manage kind of containers and configuration that way throughout your system and like make it make it super easy like that so yeah i think that's all for me